You know, I was about 19, 20 before I really started getting into the word for myself as a believer. I got saved when I was nine, but my entire spiritual diet consisted of whatever they talked about on Sunday and whatever they talked about on Wednesday. And I could blame a lot of it on the dyslexia and the ADD and all that stuff. But I think I was just a lazy Christian on top of that. And I felt like whatever they were talking about was probably all I needed to know about God. And I didn't see a lot of people really getting into the word around me my age. So I just sort of grew up thinking that, hey, we, we do baseball on Thursday and Tuesday. We do this on Saturday. We do church on, on Sunday. And it sort of became a book that I just sort of kept up with. And when my life hit the bottom at 19, um, I decided I was deciding there for a few nights whether or not I was going to stick around. I opened my Bible and I started reading and I just needed to know there's got to be more to Jesus than church. There's got to be more than just trying to do more good things and bad things and, and hoping God's going to love us through it. Um, I, I was living off my feelings, but our feelings lie. If how you're getting through your day is by how you feel today, you're in trouble. I'm going to have about six new moods between here and my car because we are like this. Life hits us from every direction. But when I started getting in the Word for myself, I started seeing that there was a very different Jesus in the Word than there was in my head because I'd stitched together a Jesus that would stick around for a while, but sooner or later, he's going to give up. I, I, I dreamt up a Jesus and I stitched together a Jesus and a God that, that, that if you met the standard, he would love you back. And if we would do the work, then he would bless, right? And I, I remember reading and noticing person by person, story by story, that Jesus filled up the Bible with people so much worse than me. I mean, they were messing up everything. Even those, the closest to him, the disciples, the guys that he was gonna use to start the church were a bunch of train wrecks. They did everything wrong, it seemed. When they were supposed to go, they stayed. When they were supposed to, to wait, they jumped. And they, they, they talked when they should have been quiet and they, were, they ran when he needed them the most. And when I read that only one person, one disciple even showed up when Jesus died, that's when God had my attention. Because I needed to know at 19 years old, what does Jesus think about people that run away? What does Jesus think about people that give up. Only one of his guys even showed up. What is he going to do with that? And I was reading in the book of John, and I saw that the very first thing Jesus did when he rose from the grave is he went looking for his guys. That's the very first thing he did. He didn't start a new team. He, tra he tracked them down. He found them hiding in rooms. He found them out doing their old job, going back to fishermen. So some of his, his uh, outer disciples, the, the, the larger group, had ran away, they were seven miles away in Emmaus. And what does Jesus do in Luke 24? He goes to Emmaus and appears on the road with them the day of the resurrection. That's big stuff. He chased them seven miles down the road to talk to them. Jesus meets these two disciples on the road and he asks them what they're talking about. And he's made them to where they can't recognize his face. And they look at him like he's got two heads. And they say, how could you not know what's going on? Are you a traveler? Have you just gotten into town? Have you been living under a rock, basically? They said, Jesus was just crucified. And it said, we had hoped that he was gonna be the one. And then they said, but it's been three days. And we see in their story, that's how long it took them to lose their hope. He didn't come through the way they wanted him to come through. And they gave up and they ran. And what does Jesus do? Does he give up? No. Jesus always moves towards us. Jesus always moves first. He's always drawing us to him. He's not waiting on us to get good. He is coming to us and meeting us where we are. He's not asking us to come back. He's just asking us to turn around and recognize who he is and know that he has come after us with, 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 with love and redemption because that's the kind of Jesus we serve. From the garden to the cross, he's been chasing after us, drawing us to him. Jesus himself said, no man comes to the Father unless the Spirit draws him. If it's even in your mind and your heart right now to turn to God, it's because he's already moving in your heart, because love moves first. When anybody else would turn to